Hello there, ladies, gentlemen, and enemies, and welcome to 5 Minute Genres. I'm your host, Simon from Games Deconstructed, and I'm here today to talk to you about one of my personal faves Cape Punk. 5 minutes are on the clock, thanks a lot for joining me, and let's go! What is Cape Punk? Cape Punk is a subgenre of superhero fiction. How does it differ from other types of superhero fiction? Well, Cape Punk, in comparison to the general genre of superhero media and other subgenres within it, tries to present a more realistic image of a world where superpowers are present. And what exactly is meant by realistic in this context? Now, this realism that I mention is mostly expressed by analyzing the social, economic, and political consequences of superheroes being a thing. And, of course, the inclusion of slice-of-life elements. The number one question that these stories try to answer is how would our real world change if superheroes were present, if they were a thing? Are dark, gritty superhero stories cape punk? Not necessarily. The fact that superheroes bleed, spit, and gutturally grunt is a visually striking humanization of the heroes themselves, but Cape Punk is more concerned with realistic presentations of the consequences of superheroes rather than the superheroes themselves. In that way, I'd argue Batman v Superman is clearly not a Cape Punk movie, despite its very edgy presentation, while Powerless, the office sitcom where Alan Tudyk plays Bruce Wayne's idiot cousin, is. The division between the two is further modeled, as both edgy superhero fiction and cape punk tend to explore similar topics and similar themes. Namely, the old as time deconstruction of superhero media that powers are bad, actually. Are street level superheroes cape punk? Also, not necessarily. Street level superheroes seem more realistic because superheroes are innately unrealistic compared to our lived experience, and street level stuff is less superhero y. So, the more powers your characters have, the more unrealistic the story is. But again, realism in Cape Punk is understood as the exploration of consequences of superpowers and not the superpowers themselves. That's why street level stories are not necessarily more Cape Punk than cosmic scale stories. Street level stories, however, are more likely to be cape punk through sheer statistics, because they have a smaller pool of topics to choose from in general. Your street level heroes are probably not involved in multiversal conflicts or interplanetary diplomacy, so mundane social stuff is just going to come out more often. What are examples of cape punk? Well, you've got books like the excellent web serial Worm and its successor Word, also the Wild Cards shared universe or the Wearing the Cape series. Parts of anime and manga like One Punch Man and My Hero Academia, with other parts being more traditional superhero stories, as well as different parts of TV series like Gotham and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. before they completely jumped the shark. And of course, comics. How cape punk these get really depends on the issue and the run in question, but notable ones are early Spider-Man, Alan Moore's Watchmen, and some more socially concerned street-level stuff, like the question, what are cape punk stories about? We touched upon that one briefly, but to dive a bit deeper, cape punk stories often come to the conclusion by exploring the consequences of superpowers being present in the setting that this inclusion would make the world a more dangerous, perhaps generally worse place to live in, and they may even go as far as to make the lives of those who possess them less happy, worse, as a result. That's where they often meet their edgy cousins, the Snyder-esque dark superhero stories, but they can just as often come to the conclusion that a world with superpowers could be wonderful and interesting through the same detailed analysis of potential consequences. A story like this could go beyond the hero and supervillain dynamic and consider superpowers as just improving the lives of ordinary people, 
One of the topics that are also popular in the broader general superhero genre that works extremely well with cape punk stories is the minority versus majority conflicts that you may remember from every single thing featuring the X-Men, basically. And they benefit a lot as a result from cape punk's focus on the unpowered characters and their points of view and the social consequences of having powers, because in essence that's what these stories are about. Hey, thanks a lot for joining me today, I hope you've learned something about Cape Punk, and I hope to see you in the next one.